Every single day, it seems like new headphones and IEMs are announced. But the release of a new flagship class electrostatic headphone is like a comet, only with a schedule that's far less predictable. There are very few and far between. But today is one of those rare days. Odyssey is entering the electrostatic headphone realm in a big, big way with this. This is the new Odyssey Carbon electrostatic headphone. We were visiting Odyssey's headquarters several years ago when they first told us about their electrostatic headphone project. Only the first time we saw what they were working on, it looked more like this. Now, as you can imagine, I didn't know what to make of that at first sight. Without context, it looks strikingly unusual. I still can't help but giggle when I considered what that would look like on top of one's head. But there's actually a wonderful, very important story behind it. A story about what that unusual headphone is, how it's properly worn, and how it led to this, the Odyssey Carbon, which is a formidable contender in the very uncrowded top-tier electrostatic headphone category. Odyssey's CEO, Shankar Thiagasamadram, came to visit us here at HeadFi HQ. He brought the Carbon with him, which we'd been waiting at least a few years for, and he sat down with us to tell us the story behind this and this. Shankar, thanks for coming to Head HQ to talk about the new Carbon. Thank you for having me. Yeah, this is exciting news because um, it's kind of unexpected. You guys are planar magnetic. That's what everybody knows Odyssey for, obviously, even with in-ears now. But an electrostat, I think, is going to catch a lot of people off guard. It's going to be a big surprise. It was to me a few years ago when we first found out that you were working on it. Let's talk about how you ended up making the Carbon. How did we end up there? Sure. Um, initially... All this started with uh, trying to make film. That's, um, you know, when we make planar headphones, you have seen our laser etching and all that stuff. So we were trying to make film that was conductive in certain areas and not conductive in certain areas, but it failed and we ended up creating a new type of film. In this film, what we do is we take the film and when we cast it, we put carbon nanotubes inside them. So it's a new type of film that we have created and patented. And we had this film, but we had put it on the back burner. And then uh, in, during a meeting with a place and uh, during a meeting with uh, Professor Mark Cohen from UCLA. He's a neuroscientist and uh, works at the Semmel Institute of Neuroscience at UCLA and uh, Boom Bank, Taylor Garland from Boom Bank. They came to us and said they wanted to have some help with a particular project that they were having difficulty with. So that's uh, restarted this whole project and this was way back in 2016 when we started working on a on this headphone that you can use inside an MRI mission. So an MRI machine is one of the most hostile places to uh, create and design some electronics for. You have enormous amount of flux from the magnetic field, and then you have the coil that's used to modify the magnetic field. You have a lot of electromagnetic uh, um, uh, forces. So we cannot use any metal. We cannot use any um, you know ferrous material. We cannot use even copper wires and stuff. It had to be designed from the ground up. So we thought, okay, this other material, the carbon nanotube film that we had created might be useful here. So we went about designing a headphone from the ground up. And also the other big problem, the reason why we started this project was when people uh, they get MRA, um, it's too big. The big problem is the amount of noise that it's created. First of all, it's claustrophobic inside the uh, chamber. And then you have 120 dB of noise. So what we are trying to do with this particular headphone here is we are trying to do noise cancellation on electrostatic headphones. Uh, we get about 60 dB of noise cancellation. And on top of it, we also provide, it provides patient care and it makes the patient comfortable enough so they stay much more still. Uh, so you can get better MR images. In addition to it, it's also useful for research where you can give auditory signals to see which areas of the brain uh, light up and stuff in the MRI. So this is why we started this particular project, and um, that's the headphone that you see there. <laughs> and we're going to have to explain that headphone uh, shortly because obviously the form factor is unusual. You'll <laughs> you'll understand why later. But the um, so this is very interesting. You started with the film. You were essentially just experimenting with carbon nanotubes. And how you might how you might be able to use them making headphones. You weren't necessarily well. Actually, you weren't thinking about electrostatic headphones at the time, or you were. So we, we knew that this material could be used for electrostatic okay. headphones, but there was no. You know, we thought about it. You know, we could make one of the you know an electrostatic headphone, but 
uh, till this we started doing the set phone, right. there was no purpose behind it, right? There, so once we had this particular request, we thought we could actually help um, here. This is a headphone that could actually make a difference, right? right? So we decided, okay, maybe there is, um, and it almost became a passion project at that point. So maybe we can help improve this uh, comfort and patient comfort and uh, research areas. So we started working on this electrostatic headphone and then we realized we could also make a audio file version. Yeah, this is, uh, I'm, I'm glad you worked on it. It is a cool project. And like you said, I think it has meaning. Uh, uh, it can be helpful in its application. Uh, and that's really cool. Uh, Obviously, I, I, we we have to connect it to this audiophile headphone, the carbon that you're making, um, because that's a very exciting for our community. I think a lot of people were wondering, you know, was was Odyssey kind of out of audiophile? Um, but before we get to that, we have to explain this uh, because it's <laughs> it's such an unusual looking headphone. So, <laughs> so can you explain the form, form factor? Yeah. So so the design yeah. itself is from Boom Bank, yeah. right? And uh, they are a design house in LA. Sure. Um, they actually are part of the smart project. It was incubated there. Okay. So this particular headphone, you actually wear it around your chin. There you um, go. <laughs> yeah. So so this is a human centric design. So so you have to understand in a uh, MRI machine, you have a head coil and uh, stuff like that, and this has to fit inside. Right. So we make multiple sizes of this. Actually, this is custom built for it. It does not use the same um, um, bias voltage and stuff. It's specially made. Okay. So there is multiple sizes. So this is for the full size headphone with noise cancellation. You have optical cables and stuff. There's a microphone here, and it basically slides under the coil into and gives you good uh, both good isolation and noise cancellation. So we also have other. Uh, so this is the driver that actually is used inside. Right. Um, you can also see some electronics on it. These electronics are used to convert to optical and, okay. um, you know. And there is also a smaller version for kids um, that you can use. Uh, there is also a small in-ear version. Yeah, I think, uh, I, I mean, that was, I think it was, <laughs> I think explaining the form factor was important. So there you go. You, you wear can, it. You wear it from underneath because you're laying down, right, in an MRI. So then that's resting kind of on your torso, on your chest. Correct. Um, and, and it's comfortable that way. You can wear it in your bed. <laughs> you can wear you can, yeah, make a <laughs> make a bed version of the carbon. All right, so let's get to the carbon, mm -hmm. which is the the audiophile headphone that that was born from this, really. Correct. Um, thankfully, with a more traditional form factor. Yes. Although maybe maybe there's a market for that. So let's talk about the carbon. So you mentioned this has 60 dB of noise cancellation, um, which is crazy impressive. We won't get into the details of that now, but. But let's be clear about something. The the the, uh, the carbon does not have noise cancelling. No, this is a yeah. traditional audiophile headphone. Right. Um, right. It's um, it uses the same driver okay. uh, without the electronics and stuff, um, carbon and tube uh, film. But this is this uses uh, the Pro Bias Tax Pro Bias, okay. uh, so you can plug it into any um, electrostatic amplifier and it should work. And um, it also does not have um, the optical cables and stuff. So this sure. uses traditional uh, audiophile design. So I want to get into the carbon nanotube uh, diaphragm. But uh, before we get into that, I just want to quickly mention, and we'll talk about the sound later in the video more, but initial impression sounds fantastic. Because um, at this, you know, right now, I haven't really spent a ton of time with it, but super duper um, uh, impressive first impressions. I'm not the only one here at the office that felt that way. Um, and I think you kind of expected that. I, you know how good it sounds. Um, I was actually also very excited because we powered it at first with the Stax SRM-D10, which is a portable electrostatic amplifier, uh, uh, energizer, and uh, and it drove it very easily. Like, I've, I've had some headphones before where I had to turn it, like, way up deep into the volume knob travel. This one... I was getting very usable volume very early on. So it's, I mean, as electrostatic headphones go, I would, I would say it's sensitive. It's mm -hmm. easy to drive. There Cut you go. Um, is that, I mean, I, I think that's a fair observation. I'm not sure if, if that's something that, that you intended. but Yeah, so, so because we make our own thin film, um, like with the carbon tubes, we can control these things very easily. So for the medical version, we have to cancel noise that's almost 120 dB. So we had to create a electrostatic headphone that was actually very, very loud. So this headphone uses about 800 volts bias voltage and 1,000 okay. volts driving voltage. This is more traditional. This is the pro bias. With, um, um, and so depending upon how we make the film, we can control the efficiency, all that stuff. So as um, 
electrostatic headphones go from an SPL standpoint, it probably maybe reaches a little higher. Is that Correct. what you're saying? Because yes. it, it comes from this, which that was a design requirement? Yes, that's a design. All right, so so the, the carbon nanotube diaphragm. Um, you're making this, you're going into a field where there are other electrostatic headphones. It's a pretty boutique field. Let's talk about the differences between a carbon nanotube diaphragm, for anybody not familiar, and a traditional electrostatic headphone diaphragm. Sure. So typically, uh, almost every electrostatic headphones that we know, um, the traditional designs, they take a thin film and they coat it with metal on one, one side, typically. And um, uh, this is how uh, almost all the electrostatic headphones we have known are done. What we have done very differently here is we cast our own film. So like an LCD, you know, even a regular planar headphone, the film is cast for us. It goes from a liquid and then we cast it into a thin film. So we have figured out a way to take carbon nanotubes and put them and diffuse them uh, into the liquid in a very uniform way. So these are single wall ca carbon nanotubes. They are an allotrope of um, carbon uh, similar to graphene, but they are in a um, like a tube-like structure and they are conductive. So we put them and make the film with it. So the, wall, the entire volume of the film is now conductive with the carbon nanotubes. So this is what we use in these headphones. So unlike typical electrostatic headphones, we don't have coating. Um, in many times, sometimes the coating is also non-uniform because they are very um, extremely thin, few angstroms, and it's very difficult because we do vacuum deposition as well for planar headphones. So we know how difficult it is to make very uniform coating. So in these things, we can now control this extremely well. And the driving force is throughout the volume of the film. So it's extremely easy to drive and very, you know, it's very robust film. Okay. So it's not coated not with coated. carbon nanotubes. The way you make it is during casting. You said you diffuse the carbon nanotubes throughout the, the film in, when it's in its liquid state. Correct. And then when it, when it I don't dries. know, it dries, cures, whatever. Um, now you've effectively turned, I mean, for all intents and purposes, you've turned that film into a conductive film. Correct. Without a coating. Yes. And so, um, and, and, and key advantages to that? Is we don't, you know, the it's uniformity. easier to make, it's okay. uniform. Yeah. We can control the uniformity. We all can also control the conductivity. So if we need to make diaphragms uh, with multiple form factors, it's easier to make. And also, it is also, uh, we don't have to worry too much about um, uh, how manufacturing process. It makes the manufacturing process much more uh, uniform and easier. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm very excited about it. Uh, it is a very detailed headphone, but it's not it's not harsh. That first impressions again. Uh, I have a feeling even the most diehard, say for example, Stax aficionados are going to find this to be um, one of the most compelling alternatives. Uh, it was just a short time that we've had a chance to listen to it, but we were able to listen to it a bit, and and, uh, and we'll be spending more time with it. But again, so later in the video, we'll talk more about sound quality. But I'm very excited that you were able to do these two things, right? This, which you said, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, will have positive contributions to the medical community um, with the MRIs, but of course, as an audiophile, <laughs> you yeah. know, the, the carbon yeah, so, is very exciting. So this, this headphone is more of a passion project in the sense that you know, it's very rewarding to see when we take these headphones and when we do the field testing and stuff, you can see people uh, are much more comfortable and it's um, they get better MR images and stuff like that. And uh, so this, um, what, this is what we call a purpose-driven headphone. Right. Right? It actually has a contribution more than just a headphone for audiophiles and stuff. But also the benefit is, is we probably have made one of the best sounding headphones uh, that we have ever made with this uh, because of this. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that is an exciting project and it does seem like something you're doing that's going to be good um, for uh, and advancing uh, the experience and also probably research associated with the fMRIs. Um, I get it and I'm excited about it, but that's the one I keep um, looking at and I think the audience is going to be thrilled and I'm sure they'll appreciate this as well. But um, I'm very excited about the fact that you guys have developed a carbon. I think again, for anybody that was worried about um, is is Odyssey not doing audiophile anymore or anything new in audiophile, this, this is one of the answers to the question mm -hmm. that's rather obvious. You pretty much took the most extreme audiophile headphone type, if you know, in a way, yeah. 
and 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 uh, I think that helps answer the question. So and also new things, right, with carbon nanotube film and other things. I yeah. do not know of anybody else who has ever used carbon nanotubes in this method. I'm not. I'm not aware of it either. I'm yeah. Not, yeah. So and it's a very exciting development for us also. Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty pumped about it. So uh, uh, and I think a lot of people will be. And I think the electrostatic aficionados are going to be really pumped when they hear it too. Yeah, I think I think this is you know um, I think they will actually like it also because oh, it's not yeah. um, you know it's a very refined headphone uh, it's one of the best sounding headphones we have made so hopefully they like it as well I think I think you're I think you're safe there but thanks for coming out to HeadFi HQ to talk about the carbon thanks thanks Jude thanks for having me the Odyssey Carbon is very precisely what Shankar described it's Odyssey's best sounding headphone especially when it comes to resolving ability. Now, right away, in terms of tonal balance, in terms of resolution, the Stax SR009 comes immediately to mind when first hearing the Odyssey Carbon. There are clearly differences between them, but I think they're really playing the same game in the same league. As opposed to what I consider the warmer, richer Stax SR007, the Stax SR009 is probably the electrostatic aficionado's most common first choice for pure resolving ability, especially if one's looking for a faster, more incisive sound. The SR009 is a technical masterpiece in my opinion, and so is the new Odyssey Carbon. To my ears, the Carbon clearly has the SR009 in its crosshairs. As far as its tonal balance goes, the Odyssey Carbon has a leaner, faster signature, as does the SR009. I find the Carbon's bass to have at least the bass extension of Stax's flagship, but would probably give the advantage in terms of bass presence and feel and impact, I'd probably give a slight advantage to the Carbon. While I think most audiophiles would consider the bass of both of these headphones to be neutral, I'm in the camp that finds this flatter tuned bass on the leaner side of my preferences, and so I tend to EQ both of these headphones with the bass up, which I'll get to again shortly. When it comes to comparing the mid-range of the new Carbon to the now legendary SR009, to me it's like splitting hairs, both headphones having a very neutral mid-band with so much detail, so much detail, in this crucial, critically important part of the audio band. The heart of much of what we listen to is in the mid-range, and for me, this is where electrostatic magic perhaps most reveals itself. The realism that comes from the advantages in terms of physics that electrostatic drivers may possess over other types of drivers. We're talking about ultra-low mass diaphragms, diaphragms with less mass than the air they're displacing, without the need for the added mass of conductive traces or voice coils. Instead of sounding like music being conveyed by something, with great electrostats, the sound kind of just exists, like they're recreating the charged acoustic of something live and real life. Anyway, again, when it comes to mid-range, I'd call the Carbon and the SR009 pretty much dead even. Their clarity only matched or exceeded by other electrostats or real life. It's when we start talking about treble, though, that we get to the biggest differences you'll hear between the Odyssey Carbon and the Stax SR009. For me, the stack sometimes presents with a bit too much treble energy. While it's always refined up top, the 009 sometimes sounds too spotlit in the highs for me, something I'll occasionally use a parametric equalizer to sculpt just to take a little bit of that high frequency energy down on the 009 depending on what I'm listening to. With the Odyssey Carbon, I'll sometimes find myself taking a little bit away from the presence region using EQ, but never higher than that like I do with the SR009. So I'm occasionally EQing the treble of both of these headphones, but in different places. Now, in terms of their default signatures, without any equalization, I definitely prefer the Carbon's treble to the SR009s. The Carbon delivers plenty of treble information and energy with the resolving ability to be as analytical and crisp as I'd like. But compared to the SR009, the Carbon's treble is just a touch tamer, a pinch more smooth than burnished up top, and enough so to make it a bit more organic, a little more smooth and natural in the treble for me than the SR009. And it's for what I consider these advantages in its treble presentation that I'll probably end up listening more to the Carbon than the 009. As for amplifiers, we've now used the Carbon with several electrostatic amps we have here, including the portable Stax SRM-D10, the fully solid state Stax SRM-353X, the vacuum tube hybrid Stax SRM-007T2, and our custom Frank Cooter designed and built 845 directly heated electrostatic headphone amplifier, my favorite electrostatic amp to date. All of these, from the SRM-D10 to the big Frank Cooter amp, all of these drove the Odyssey Carbon easily. The Frank Cooter 845 amp was built with the SR-009 in mind, but happens to drive every electrostatic headphone I've plugged into it beautifully. It's so lush and lifelike with the SR-009, and now the Odyssey Carbon, that I don't find myself EQing either of these headphones when I use it. 
Anyway, I don't expect you'll have any difficulty driving the carbon with any Stax Pro Bias compatible electrostatic amp you have. I should also touch on the Odyssey Carbon's physical design and build. The Carbon's diaphragms are huge and so then are the ear cups. As Shankar mentioned, the Carbon's diaphragms do not use a metallic coating on them, instead using diaphragms that have carbon nanotubes embedded within and throughout them for more uniform conductivity and improved longevity among other benefits. I know of no other electrostatic headphone that uses anything like this, all others instead using metallic surface coatings. As for the Carbon styling, if you're familiar with Odyssey's LCD planar magnetic headphones, the Carbon will look and feel immediately familiar to you. I should mention that my head is larger than average and I have to use the Carbon with its headband fully extended. If your head is larger than mine, ask Odyssey about longer sizing rods. The Carbon is also a gorgeous headphone to look at with newly designed leather ear pads, a carbon fiber suspension headband, striking looking acetate rings, beautiful grills, a premium cable with a custom designed plug that has a machined aluminum housing, and a very nice travel case. I know this is the part of the video that a lot of you wait for or fast forward to, so let's take a look at some Odyssey Carbon measurements, including some measurement comparisons. The following measurements were made using the Bruland Care 5128, which is the most human-like ear simulator standard and what we've transitioned to as our primary headphone measurement fixture. The 5128 is the first hearing simulator that simulates adult human hearing across the full audio range from 20 Hz to 20 kHz. If you want to learn more about the Care 5128, make sure to check the description or the accompanying forum post and I'll include a link to a video in which I explain the 5128 in some detail. Let's start of course by looking at the frequency response measurement of the new Odyssey Carbon. This is the Odyssey Carbon's THD or Total Harmonic Distortion measurement at 96 dB SPL. As you can see, the Carbon has impressively low harmonic distortion at all frequencies. Now, as I mentioned earlier and in other videos, I regularly use a parametric equalizer to tune headphones to my preference. For the Odyssey Carbon, I'll occasionally increase its bass output to suit my taste, so I wanted to look at its THD at a higher output level, in this measurement at 110 dB SPL. As you can see, even at 110 decibels output, the Carbon has less than 0.1% THD across most of the measurement, so I feel very comfortable boosting the Carbon with an EQ at any frequency without penalty. In this measurement you're looking at now, we're comparing the Odyssey Carbon's frequency response to the frequency response of the Stax SR009 that it will no doubt be compared to frequently. And here you can see the Odyssey Carbon's frequency response compared to the Stax SR007s. A lot of electrostatic headphone enthusiasts love the SR007, myself included. I want to note that the low bass measurement of the SR007 might be compromised with a less than ideal seal over the measurement fixture. If you've seen other SR007 measurements online, you know this is a common occurrence, but I find the SR007 seals better on my head than on measurement fixtures. Now let's compare the Odyssey Carbon's frequency response to some very popular headphone standards, starting with the Sennheiser HD800S. And now the Carbon's frequency response compared to the Sennheiser HD650s. Again, the launch of a new flagship class electrostatic headphone is an extremely rare event, so I'm very excited to finally be able to talk about Odyssey's new carbon electrostatic headphone here on HeadFi TV. I also want to thank Shankar Thyagasamadram again for coming to visit us at HeadFi HQ. With the new carbon and its unique embedded carbon nanotube diaphragms, Odyssey is making abundantly clear they've never stopped developing exciting new flagship audiophile headphones, and I feel confident we'll see plenty more in the coming years. Thanks for watching this episode of HeadFi TV. We'll see you next time and on the forums at headfi.org.